Hello, my guest today is a former accountant with an MBA in marketing. He has his own record label. He also runs a number of other enterprises, including the record label, a video production arm, and a business which designs and manufactures loudspeakers. He is highly and widely respected campaigner and advocate for SMEs and recently completed a stint as president of one of the UK's most prominent chambers of commerce. He is here today as a judge for the Asian Apprenticeship Awards. I welcome Mr. Ninda Johal to Pathway Group Offices. Welcome. Always good to see you. 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 Yeah, obviously you're a person that I respect highly. You've Thank been, you. You've been, uh, we've known each other for about a year, year and a half, but it's like, you know, we've known each other for such a long time, Linda. And the feelings are reciprocated. Yeah. Yeah, obviously you was, you were a speaker for us at Pathway to Grow event Correct. last November. Back in November. November right. I remember it well. November, fantastic event. Fantastic response that you've had. Thank you very much. Yeah, really, so really thank you for getting involved with Asian Apprenticeship Awards. Thank you for your time today. Fine. Just tell us a little bit about obviously I mean I I you know I know a lot about your 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 success and your story, but just share 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 that story with us in terms of obviously from music from maths well, to music. Well what's what what's interesting, we, we talk about apprenticeships and yeah. we talk about perception. And we talk about uh, stereotypical behaviour from Asians. Uh, and and I, I guess my journey, which is a bit of a zigzag, yeah. uh, actually pays testament to that kind of thinking. So you can imagine having done a degree in finance, yeah. then having done an MBA, yeah. and then operating as a management consultant, I decide yeah. to throw all that away, yeah. so my parents <laughs> think, <laughs> and set up a record company. Yeah. So a creative company that releases records. Um, and, and and it was that perception which is you've got a couple of degrees. Why are you now doing something like this? And I think that's similar to the apprenticeship thing. Yeah. You know, why aren't you going to do a degree? Why are you going down yeah. apprenticeship? So I, I, I see a bit of similarity yeah. in terms. So in terms of my journey, yeah, I then uh, started selling records, Bangladesh music. Yeah. Uh, at the time, I was uh, playing in a band of my own, a Janak, Janak yeah. and, um, and 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 I saw. I suppose I saw. Um, this vision that one day, this music that was sung in a foreign tongue with foreign instrumentation uh, and everything that was foreign to the Western ear, one day would hit the charts. The and that was the, yeah, and that was the vision really, and that was the vision. And of course, you can imagine over the decade, most people fell about laughing, and if they didn't laugh, they walked <laughs> in the direction. Uh, but fortunately for me, the persistence paid off. Yeah. And in 2003, we went number five in the UK charts. Uh, we went. We went number seven in the U.S. charts with Jay Z featuring, wow. and then we had a, num a further nine number ones. And I suppose the proud thing was that it was, it was a track from the U.K. Yeah. It was a track that was manufactured here. Okay. We then sold it back to the Indians, yeah. um, and it was something I suppose nobody thought was possible that you could get into the U.K. mainstream charts yeah. with basically a Bhangra track yeah. sung in a foreign tongue with foreign instrumentation. Yeah. And everything about it was yeah. foreign, but it worked. So that was, uh, it was a proud moment. Yeah. It was good, the fact that the 10 years of had worked. Yeah. And um, But, you know, you've got to have persistence. Some people thought it was foolhardy. Yeah. It was a dream and something that could never be achieved. So it's quite good to see it when it did chart. So you're, I mean, obviously you're regarded as an entrepreneur, but you're also involved with many organisations in terms of non-executive, governor type of role. Tell us a little bit about your community involvement and well, some of your work that well, you're doing. I, well, I say this quite, yeah. quite funny because people say yeah. to me, well, how did you end up yeah. as the uh, the president of the Black Country Chamber of Commerce? Yeah. And um, so, so, again, if, if the journey is that I was selling records firstly yeah. to Asian kids, yeah. and then when we broke the charts, we sold it to foreign territories, yeah. So I remember I'm born in this country. I remember I have an MBA from this country. Yeah. Um, but what I'd realized uh, when I was selling records is that actually, apart from the VAT man and the tax man, yeah. actually I didn't know any white people. So, <laughs> so I joined the Chamber of Commerce <laughs> to meet white people, if that sort of makes sense. And, um, but fortunately, I, I did reasonably well at the Chamber for them to then say to me, five, four or five years later, would you like to become our president? president yeah. and, and so that was a good moment, knowing yeah. that... Um, I'd been doing what I'd been doing and what I was trying to set out to do. So, from the Chamber of Commerce, I was asked to join the LEP. That's you made a lot of difference in the, cha in the Chamber. Well, it's very good of you to yeah. say. So, I, 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 yeah, I let other people yeah. make that judgment. Yeah. Um, and then from there, I joined what we call a local enterprise partnership. Yeah. And uh, that's a government body yeah. that's um, given that body... Um, uh, the sort of remit to look after the strategy, the economic Part of strategy. the devolution process, Absolutely. is it localised and regionalised? the region. Yeah, regional. um, and of course, I understand skills, so I, uh, I was a governor of a, of a school called Victoria Academy. Yeah. Um, 
which was failing at the time when I joined, although I don't think it was down to me with the headmaster, but yeah. over six years, we managed to turn it into an outstanding school. Yeah. Uh, so that was good, watching kids uh, get really well qualified. Um, and then I, I'm vice chair of Sandwell College. Yes. So again, further education, and I'm a board governor at Wolverhampton University. Yes, so you can see from primary to, to further, further education, education now, to higher, higher education. Higher education and that journey is very important if we're going to get a skilled workforce. And that's quite frankly why I'm pleased about the apprenticeship awards and I understand the rationale behind it and I understand the thinking behind it. And I understand that if we want to get more people employed and if we want a more prosperous society, if we want more wealth creation and a rebalanced economy, we need to get as many people in work and university isn't sometimes the right way. So I think the apprenticeship boards are fantastic and I understand the total rationale behind it. Any messages for the parents out there? Because that's one of the things where, you know, say some, a young person comes in and says, I'm looking to do an, a, 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 a apprenticeship, an apprentice programme. Any messages for parents I out there? I think our parents, uh, mine certainly weren't educated. Yeah. So I suppose to a certain extent, I made the decision myself. Yeah. Uh, but I would say to parents today, um, look at what your child is good at. Don't tell them to do something that you think they've they're good at. They've got to love what they do. They've got to love what they do. Um, and so, example, if, you are, if you're good with numbers, yeah. uh, the traditional route was go to university for three years and then go into accountancy. Yeah. Well, now you can go straight into accountancy as an apprentice yeah. and still end up with the same qualification. Um, without the debt, possibly. Without, <laughs> without, absolutely without the debt yeah. and probably learning much quicker. Yeah. Yeah. So that's one example, but... If your child does have a particular love for something, yeah. let them do it. Yeah. And, and generally I find somebody who's good at something and loves what they're doing, normally generally are very successful at They'll it. They'll excel at that, won't they? They'll excel. Yeah. So I think that's where, and, 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 and I think, you know, sometimes, yes, we've got to give them guidance, but let them also decide because we're in a world that's changing day by day. Yes. And we're now in an environment where the child teaches us. Yeah. We don't teach them anymore because the way technology is going. So sometimes I'm not sure we're qualified enough at times to tell them what to do. Yeah, yeah. I think they're a lot more cognizant of the world around them than we are. Just having a general conversation now about the world around us and change. And, yeah. you know, I've, I've obviously been to a uh, number of your awards, yeah. the Signature Award yeah. and, uh, and, the, and the Summer Business Model. You yeah. talk often about the change and the pace of change. Yeah, any, any, and obviously, just share share with the audience in terms of your views on that, because I just find you fascinating <laughs> in, terms of, in terms of, you know. Well, well, look, look, look. Um, technology means now um, we live in a totally different world. Um, we also have a world now because it's globally connected. It's more turbulent than it's yeah. ever been before. Uh, so stock markets now change because of a change that's miles away from you. Yeah. So something that happens in Japan. <laughs> It's all interconnected. They're all interconnected. Something happens in Japan, you think, what, how has it affected our stock market? And people say, so what if it's affected yeah. our stock market? Well, unfortunately, if, if you have a dip in the stock market, then people get a lot more pessimistic. Yeah, yeah. And, and then you can almost talk your way into a recession, despite the fact that what triggered it was thousands and thousands of miles away. And if you think about the recession that hit us in 2008, that was what we call the subprime mortgage crisis. Yeah in the US, yeah, yeah. Said, what's the US got to do with us? So yeah. we're much more interconnected. Uh, the world is now changing. Yeah. Um, I remember I remember telling somebody that in my old days when we used to sell music, yeah. you own the music. So yeah. you had a CD at home yeah, yeah, yeah. and you'd take your CD and say, yeah. I own this, yeah. this is mine. And by the way, if you want to borrow it, yeah. but I want it back, I want it back because, yeah. because, it's, because it's mine. Yeah. But now, of course, music is consumed and what you don't own it anymore, you rent it. So you listen to the stream, you switch it off and you move just to something else. You don't own it, it's not physically with you. Yeah. And then if you want to come back, you come back, you switch the computer on, you find it in the library again, then you listen to it. So you're borrowing it very much like a library yeah. or you borrow a book from a library. Yeah, yeah. So we don't own things. Yeah. And again, if you take Uber, the taxi yeah, yeah, people, yeah. They, they own no taxes, yeah. they don't own no taxes. They're, they're, they're using the facility. So we're getting into a world where ownership is not as important. Airbnb is another example. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we don't own anything like we used to. We like to own experiences. We like to share own experiences, the, yeah. show that experience and then move on. So I think um, the mindset's changed. 
And uh, I mean, I was at um, I was at the EY Awards a couple of a couple of days ago. I was yeah. one of the judges there, yeah. and majority this is interesting. Majority of the entrepreneurs that were up for awards were in charge of what we call disruptive companies. Right. Disruptive. So they were digitally led, and they were there because all they simply did was they changed the order. They changed the business models and have come up with something a lot more efficient, a lot more digital. So that's the way the world appears with to be going. With the pace of technology, anything can change. Anything. Well, 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 those days when the top five maybe in the FTSE were people who sell detergents or yeah. sell automobiles or, or, assets, so or, 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 or oil. oil. But now you take the top five companies, you've got Google, you've got Facebook, you've got people who actually don't own anything. It's a world for the for the for the organisation which is lean, which is agile, which is quick, small entrepreneurs, which is again something that you talk a lot about. And I, th and I think the other thing, and again back to education, the firms that are going to survive are the ones who own knowledge. Yeah. And it's knowledge is now your key differentiator. If you've got knowledge, then you're ahead of the game. So we say, well, what does that mean? Well, look, people in the Far East, even in the Asian subcontinent, say take Bangladesh. Yeah. They can make clothes much cheaper than we can. Yeah. You can't compete on this. You can't compete. And if you take China, their automation, yeah. their robots uh, are beyond belief. Yeah. So how do you compete with them? You compete with them by having a bigger brain. Yeah. So in other words, you have intellectual property. Yeah. So you design something that they can't copy. Yeah. Yeah. Or you then design it and send it to them to manufacture. So knowledge is key. We're now in the knowledge era. We're no longer in the era of owning things. It's the knowledge. Yeah. The firms that have got the best, highly skilled, knowledgeable workers are going to be the ones that are going to be top of the pile. Yeah. Uh, Linda, just talking about in terms of obviously manufacturing. I mean, you're you're a, you're in a manufacturing organisation based in the, the in the West Midlands in the yeah. back of Black Country. Uh, how is life for a manufacturer? Obviously, you know the government's talking about Midlands Engine. I know you're involved with, with uh, you know speaking up for the Midlands in terms of SMEs and the Midlands. Just tell, tell us your, your sort of thoughts about from, a, from an entrepreneur and a manufacturer. Well, okay, a couple of things then. I, th I think to survive in that sector, I think you have to have a product um, that has some kind of branding, yeah. that has some kind of differentiation. Yeah. Uh, you won't survive in a commoditized world. Yeah. You just won't survive. The, uh, the way we employ people in manufacturing is now going to change. Uh, you have people now investing in machinery, not people. Yeah. So robots do the work of people. Yeah. Uh, the people they now employ are different to 30 years ago. These people have to be very savvy with IT because it's the IT machines that run the robots. So I think the way we think towards the next 20, 30 years is radically different to the last 40, 50 L years. Lots of low-skill jobs, Linda. All yeah. gone, all gone. And robots are doing those jobs. Um, there was a there's a firm called Panasar Foods in in, in the Black Country, yeah. um, and originally they employ a lot of people. But if yeah. you go to the building next door, which they've expanded yeah. in, it's full of robots. Yeah. And it's a different manufacturing is different to what we, what we used to think. Absolutely, and they have three people, <laughs> and they said the advantage of robots is they don't go to sleep, <laughs> they don't have bank holidays, and they never call in sick. Yeah, they used to say that about Asians before. <laughs> And, <laughs> and, and, and they're consistent, the delivery is consistent, yeah. and that's the world we're moving into. Yeah. And I think you're absolutely right, those packing jobs, pack, put in here, put in there, yeah. those are gone. Yeah. So I think uh, the economy, UK economy, needs highly skilled, highly educated people. And I don't think we can now rest back and think, you know something, a job will come. Uh, and, and the other thing that's happening in this really rapidly moving world, uh, the job for life has now gone. Yeah. They, they, they think yeah, in a lifetime you may have anything between 8 to 14 different jobs. So I think that's gone and I think mobility has now changed. We can catch a flight anytime. You remember the days if you went yeah, to yeah. Pakistan and India, it was a big, big yeah, event. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the local countries, a big <laughs> yeah, event. Yeah. Everyone would come around and say, come and see you. Come yeah, and see yeah. you and say, oh, you're off yeah, to yeah, Pakistan, yeah, yeah. you're off to India. Well, well, how long are you gone for? Hey, it's yeah, going to... Yeah. Now, people, no, it's just, it's just, yeah, yeah, you yeah, book a ticket yeah. and by the yeah, morning, yeah, you, you yeah, could have gone. Yeah. So that's how life has changed. It's a lot more rapid, it's a lot more mobile. And competition isn't around the corner. Competition is in some far country. Anybody, is there, anybody could be a competitor. Anybody. I don't think you can assume that your business is safe. Uh, just to give you a couple of examples, um, uh, people have sort of taken the mick out of me, but I, I own, <laughs> for the moment, a BlackBerry. Yeah. Uh, five years <laughs> yeah. ago, it was five years ago, it was worth 50 billion. Yeah. 
And this week they've announced they're going to stop manufacturing blackberries. Yeah. So yeah. for 50 billion. From there to where it is now. To, to where it is now. And BHS yeah, went exactly, bankrupt, yeah. 11,000 jobs. And they've just set up now as an online operation employing 83 people. Yeah. Can you imagine the skill set of those 83 versus the people, 11,000. So I'm afraid we live in that kind of world. So I think education, skilling, apprenticeships is core to the UK economy, absolutely core. Linda, how do you stay relevant? I mean, you're, you know, you're, you're at the forefront of lo a lot of this. As a, a person that I look up to, um, you know, how, how do you stay relevant, current, and at the, the, the sort of the top I, of the curve? I, I, think, I think, one, you've got to remain in what I call the learning mode. Yeah. Now, learning can mean a lot of different things to a lot of different people. Yeah. Uh, for some people, it's going to college. For some people, it's uh, going maybe studying online. Uh, to other people, it's simply adopting and accepting things that are different to what you're used Open to. Open mindset. Open yeah. minded. Right? Yeah. And, and watching the world around you and not shutting yourself off from the world, absorbing and learning from you people learn like from you. Anything, yeah. And learning no, from people no, like no, you. No, no, you can learn from anybody. And again, anybody, I've, yeah. I've learned a lot from you. And, and again, really appreciate your support. And really appreciate your support with Asian Apprenticeship Awards Not as well. Absolutely fine. And any last messages just for, say, the, the people out there in terms of apprentices as a whole and apprenticeships generally? You've said a lot already, but any sort of last... I, 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 I think, because of the changing world, I think never assume. Yeah. Never assume that today is going to be the same as tomorrow. Um, keep all your options open um, and I think if you're agile and I think if you're willing to learn and I think you've above all assistance I guarantee success will come. Linda thank you so much for your time a lot of love and respect for you thank, thank you. you so much thank, thank you very much, much.